Hey, what's happening? It's G Perico, and you're watching an all new episode of Welcome to My Neighborhood on Civil TV. Don't ask me how I do it. Watch how I move. I need everything fast for me. It ain't safe cruising. I'm trying to double up on this little money right quick. Cause when it's time to do business, who gon' fund this shit? I hop out, they get to talking. Look how you walking. I basically started the store and opened the store for just an outlet for me to pretty much stay out of trouble. Cause I used to be around here and a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like in order for me to stay out of trouble and also take advantage of my entrepreneurial spirit around here without doing shit illegal, I started this store, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so we got the So Way Out design. You know, it's clean, sleek, classic, you know what I mean? Um, I got this from my boy, Sharon Barber. I told him that I needed a design. I wanted something classic and something big and something, you know, that could last for a long time that won't get old. And, and we've been having this design for about maybe like four, five years now. So the G Perico design and the G Perico logo is actually, this is actually my handwriting. My boy, uh, Vic, when we did Shit Don't Stop, he was like, man, you write crazy, you know what I'm saying? You should write your track listing in your handwriting, so I did. And then uh, this is one of the pieces that came up out of it, G Perico, which turned into my logo, you know what I'm saying? Which is, it represent me, it's my handwriting, and this is how I really write. Watch these niggas for they steal something. You ain't gotta tell me your business. Don't need to know if you just kill something. I'm too solid, boy, bro, wait, boy. If we do business, then I don't mean you my partner, boy. I could have said it, I'm the realest nigga. But so when I uh, initially opened this store, uh, the police was fucking with me, giving me a super hard time. You know what I'm saying? They, I guess they didn't believe I cleaned my act up or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So they raided the store like early one morning. I had spent the night in the hood in the studio. Soon as I come around, brush my teeth, they running in this motherfucker. Had my boy all on the flow, had, he had, the flow used to be blue. He got blue paint all over, dust all over his face and shit. And they got us all hemmed up. They let him out the cuffs and talking to him, but I'm the fucking owner of the motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? So, after that, I filed a complaint on the police and they just, they stopped fucking with me after that. But they was giving me a super hard time, like. So we're on the corner of 108th and Broadway. Like this used to be like one of the most violent areas in the hood, like these corners right here and then this block right here, like the 10 Motel, like even my homies, like a lot of homies from my hood were scared to come down here, you know what I'm saying? And there used to be a lot of shootings pretty much on every, on this corner, on this corner, that corner, that corner, on the right here, you know? Damn near all the homies been shot down here or shot somebody down here, a gang of fights in that hotel right there, 10 a Motel. Niggas used to be scared to go up in there. These apartments. This was really where, like if you wasn't part of the in crowd or active, you was not coming into this apartment building right here. You know what I'm saying? I would say like elite homies and active homies and like reputable niggas, like would be in this building right here. Like, cause you know, if you got, if you come up in here and you ain't with the shit. Well, my favorite part about growing up around here was like, it pretty much like molded me into the, into the person that I am, you know what I'm saying? So like, not only did it give me like that street edge, you know what I mean? But I don't know, just me being a person that pay attention to a lot of shit, it, uh, it just gave me that edge in business and how to move around the, the industry and shit, you know what I'm saying? But like my least favorite part of growing up around here is like, I would say like what shit then turned into, you know what I mean? Like a lot of my friends and shit and a lot of motherfuckers I grew up looking up to like fucked up or got life in jail or smoked out and shit. So that's probably like my least favorite part. 
pretty much the only thing that really changed is just, I just got a bigger view of everything, you know what I'm saying? I got bigger insight, you know what I'm saying? So. third store right here on 103rd and Broadway. Um, this is pretty much the spot after long nights in the hood and shit. So we just pulled up to 103rd store on 103rd and Broadway, the neighborhood market. You know what I mean? I used to come here every single morning. Never fails. So I used to come through every morning, get a fresh shirt, socks, drawers and shit. You know what I'm saying? Back when we was wearing the baggy shit. Get some water, soda, uh, slushies, blunts. Pretty much get everything from right here, you know what I'm saying? Eggs, bacon, toilet paper. Send somebody to the store, get some toilet paper. Get some Fabuloso, clean up the spot. Stop through, see all your partners. Politic, you know what I mean? Pretty much the meeting spot here and there sometimes, you know what I mean? You could pay your bills. I used to pay my phone bill right here, send, get money orders. The whole shit, everything right here. We ain't gotta leave the hood. So we going on a, we going right here on 104th, between 104th and 105th. I'm about to take y'all to the place where I call my last prison case at. So this the building right here. We had the spot all the way in the back up top. And, um, you know, we was hustling up out of here doing our shit. I'm telling the homie, I'm like, man, we ain't got shit cracking tonight. It's dry. We ain't got no work. Let's go on and go to my house and kick it, because I had a two-bedroom across town and shit. I hear the gate rattling and shit. And I look out the window, I see a gang of helmets and shit. And I run through the, I'm like, I'm finna jump out the back window. So I go run. I try to wake the homie up. He sleep. So I go run to the room. And I, I look, I slide the window, and I see helmets around the back, too. Next thing you know, they get to banging on the door. But we got one of them doors, like, you can't bust in or you can't peel back and shit. So they blaming on the door. Boom, 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 boom. LAPD, woo, woo. They were screaming a gang of shit, right? I'm like, fuck, we trapped, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, they can't get in the door. Next thing you know, the windows bust. The window in my room bust, and the window in the, uh, front in the living room bus. They start shooting bombs in that motherfucker. Boom, boom, boom. And they took me to jail barefoot and shit. You know what I'm saying? I go down to 77 and I was out, you know. Shout out to my bail bonds, you know what I mean? I don't think I need that no more, you know what I'm saying? I'm legit, but shout out to my bail bonds. 